before this moment last Living the music so <laughs> Greetings from Castle Goring, from Nikki, Aurora and from me Well we have a lot of ground to cover today so I am going to plunge right in without further ado because I have spent the weekend uh, speaking to people on the continent to confirm suspicions of mine and uh, confirm memories of mine or reconfirm or whatever word you want to use uh, because we're going back many years now. But so we're going to be addressing the issue of certain princes who aren't princes and certain princes who are princes but behave as if they're trash but before getting to that I am going to cover some other ground but I'm just going to start off with something from Marilyn Whittle who says hi Lady C would like to know your take on the Flying High Club has was seen with Prince Mario Sch Matt Schoenberg Lippe. Two grifters or am I wrong? Hope they are networking each other. Too funny. Mm. Well, I will address that a little bit later. I knew his first adoptive parent, his adoptive mother, Helga Lee von Zuschonberg Lippe. Uh, she was even my guest at Ascot, etc, etc. And she was the godmother of my godson's younger sister. So, yeah, we go way back and there are connections, let's put it that way. But I'm not getting into that right now. I'm going to cover one or two other things first. H.R.H. Owen says, the son and daughter of the Princess Royal are not members of the royal family. A what? You're wrong. Sorry, I'm not wrong. They are members of a, a family. They are members of the Phillips family. They are not members of the royal family. Their mother is a member of the royal family but they are not members of the royal family. Don't take my word for it. Look it up on the royal website. You see they're nowhere mentioned. They are not royal. Family ranking is done patrilineally, not matrilineally. So more than one of you has brought this up. And I'm sorry, I'm not wrong. You surely didn't think I was going to be wrong about something as fundamental as this. Well, I'm not wrong. And if you wish to think I'm wrong, please feel free to do it. But I don't, I will not be addressing this issue any further. I'm not getting into squabbles about uh, what people think. I'm not interested in what I actually believe to be a fact when I know it's not a fact. I'm only interested in the facts. So being royal is a matter of unless your mother is the queen regnant, it is a matter of who your father is. Mark Phillips is the father of Peter Phillips and Zara Tyndall and we will now move on to Val Haynes because may I also say before I move on that you know yes it would be nice if everybody could get everything they want and yeah Peter's Phillips and Zara Tyndall are lovely and it would be nice that uh, 
because some people want them to be royal, that they're magically becoming royal. I'm afraid that's not the way life goes. Uh, and I am in the business of dealing with reality, not wishful thinking. Okay? Val Haynes says, Greetings, Lady C. Do you have any information as to how Harry's legal expenses are being paid? Is he covering the costs from personal funds or is Archwell paying under the guise of fighting media disinformation? Your observations would be appreciated as always. That's a very interesting get out of jail card that you have just played Val Haynes. Oh, maybe we shouldn't be giving them any ideas, but he has to pay out of his own personal funds. If he doesn't, it would be extremely dubious behavior. Okay, and since we have a lot of ground to cover today, I'm going to just whiz on. Josephine Hicks says, you're not talking about the Aviation Awards ceremony because Meghan didn't show up like you thought and Harry was amazing. <laughs> Josephine Hicks, yes. Harry was amazing and the earth is flat. And I didn't mention anything about it because Meghan didn't show up. I wonder how many people have decided they're going to try to bait me <laughs> over the weekend. Well, I'm afraid it's not working. Sorry. Harry wasn't amazing as Lord West, the former head of the Royal Navy, Admiral Lord West, covered in honours, uh, head of the navy you name it blah 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 etc etc and incidentally he's an absolutely charming man uh, i've had tea with him at the house of lords with a friend of mine who has the hots for him <laughs> he is very attractive and anyway he said he is not a living legend of aviation. To suggest he is, is pathetic. It makes the whole thing seem a bit of nonsense if they're willing to pick someone like Prince Harry. He didn't carry off any great exciting feat of amazing flying skill while flying for the army. They're just trying to get publicity. They know it will cause a stir and Dear Lord West, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so, excellence is this, this one is really excellent. Amateur Sleuth says, Hello, Lady C. Harry was very rude and disrespectful to John Travolta. There was also a report that Harry said he won't accept the award unless Megane is able to hand it out to him on stage. Megane didn't go. Do you think it's because she wasn't able to be on stage and give a speech? Or do you think it's because of all the bad press lately? Do you think Harry was rude because Meghan didn't get her way? Well, I'm going to actually, in the next question, answer this more comprehensively than I'm going to do now. But I'm going to touch upon one or two little things right now with Harry's speech. It was arrogant, impertinent, and his mother would be spinning in her grave if she has heard it. Whatever Diana's failings, she was always gracious. Harry was so ungracious. I mean, how dare he say to John Travolta that he's been dining out on having danced with his mother since Harry was a year old? I mean, that is a put down 
of the highest order. And let me tell you, that's a very British expression. It's not an American expression that insofar as I'm aware. Dining out is a very British put down. It was ungracious. It, I don't think it was a joke. I actually think that it was hoped to pass off as a joke. But my understanding is that there was stuff going on behind the scenes. And I will get to that by now reading out what Santa Barbara resident has to say. Lady C, I thought you might like to know I was at a party on Saturday night here in Montecito and someone who was at the Living Legends Awards said the reason Megan didn't show was because she was afraid of being mocked once you exposed her plan to dance with John Travolta. Mm, I must have done it uh, last week. I think I did. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, so much has happened between that and now. They also said he refused to go along with her idea of a dance together. They didn't know if the refusal came before or after you went public on your channel, but my friend said it infuriated her and she refused to come and be made a fool of. Seems to me she'd have made more of a fool of herself if she'd come and done the dance. What do you think? <laughs> mm. I actually did ring up people in California and evidently that's, shall we say, that's one of the stories floating around. Uh, well, <laughs> what can I say? I must be very popular in Montecito, even if I'm not popular in uh, the Sussex uh, Schloss. <laughs> because, of course, according to certain people, by doing what I did in terms of the Queen's death, that pulled the plug on Meghan and Harry's nonsense with Meghan demanding and Harry demanding that she attend. I don't know how true that is and I'm not going to act as if I necessarily rely upon it as anything but idle chatter. But this makes sense, doesn't it? And what can I tell you? She should be thanking me. I rescued her from making a total idiot of herself if that was her plan. And uh, of course, William has stayed home to take care of the children. So Megan has to stay home to take care of the child, whichever child is ill. And oh, what was wrong with it? Oh, it took a wrong breath. Oh. It took a wrong breath. It's forgotten how to spell its first word. Crocodile was for Archie. And I think onomatopoeia was for Lily. Ah. Preposterous. Preposterous. But John Travolta, good for him if he was not prepared to allow himself to be used in that way. Of course, we're never going to know what really happened because nobody's going to confirm it. But I suppose those who have their ears and noses <laughs> and mouths closer to the ground might have a point. Daisy Sunshine says, I've heard John Travolta talking about dancing with Diana. It truly seemed to be a very cherished memory for him. Who would ever try to taint that highlight and ruin the, merry, the memory? Oh yes, that's right. The ex-spare, legend in his own mind, the parking lot prince. I think 
That was a really mean-spirited thing for him to say to John Travolta. In fact, it feels like when the expert claimed he hated how the lesser people were mourning for his mother's death. It's like nobody else is allowed to cherish memories of Diana except him. Maybe he is jealous of the time others spent with his mother when he wasn't around to share those moments too. Maybe we know Diana was excited about meeting and dancing with John Travolta. Maybe the expert hates the idea that anything other than being with him would make her happy. He doesn't exactly have the most mentally appropriate thought process where Dan is concerned. Just my weird thoughts and opinion. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened that memorable evening at the White House. Diana wanted to dance with John Travolta and she got an aide to approach him to ask him if he would come and dance with her. And he graciously accepted and went over and they danced together. The fact that John Travolta thought that this was a wonderful occasion and that he has hugged it to his bosom and shared it with people is an accolade to Diana. How dare Harry insult him by saying, oh, and you've been dying out on it ever since. I mean, that is such a crass but now I cannot tell you. And I'm going to, before getting off this subject, because so many of you have such sound and solid opinions and your input is so wonderful, it cannot be ignored. It, to do so would be to do you a grave injustice. Hawk Woman says, Watching Harry Grant standing at the awards was interesting. He asserts control over John Travolta by saying, Don't go away telling him what to do in front of the crowd, waving his arm at him, even the vocal intonation of, thanks very much, Captain John, had an edge to it. All these things... <sighs> oh, Mickey, wake up. I'm not going to bother to wake Mickey up. All these things together made it look like Harry thought he was speaking to a servant. Then came that nasty joke about John Travolta grifting off his association with Diana. This is Harry to a T, his covert narcissism driving his awful comments and belittling of others at a formal ceremony. I wouldn't argue with a word of that. Thank you. Rudy Gong says, Princess Catherine was treated badly by the press, tabloids and mainstream media alike. The difference is that she doesn't read tabloid or gossip columns. Narcissists need to control the press because like Harry's wife, image is important. Princess Catherine is about substance, not appearances. That's why people like her, very much like the Princess Royal. She is unnatural. Well, Catherine Wales had the most appallingly bad press for years, consistently nasty. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. On life most people in the world, I know what it's like to be pilloried unfairly and nastily by the press over a series of years. So I can tell you that it takes courage, dignity, and a proper perspective on life to 
ignore all the filth that is being said about you and remain true to yourself, your values, and behave in an acceptable way. Revenge is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Megan and Harry might have taken a leaf out of that book, but they didn't. So we now get on to the juiciful bits about Mario, Max, Schaumburg, Lippe and Harry. Saint Megan Markle says, Recollections may vary. I was asked to make a separate post on this so more people would see this. As another sinner suggested, hopefully Lady C will fill in the gaps. Delighted to do so, my dear. This is too funny to miss as the fraud levels from poser prince meeting poser prince while H is there to pick up his unmerited fake kitty award sends the irony off the charts. Yes, well. <laughs> mm. I'm going to read out the whole batch of questions and then I'm going to address the whole thing in one fell swoop because it's actually quite interesting and complicated. Dindy Girl says, Lady C, what do you think of the practice of someone with a royal title adopting an adult so that that adult can get benefit of a royal title? This was apparently the case with Georges Gabor's husband, Prince Frederick von Anhalt and Prince Mario Max Schaumburg Lippe, who was at the Aviation Awards. Both of these men were not born royals, but obtained royal titles as adults through adoption. Sometimes there is a fee involved in these arrangements. Do you think Harry and Meghan are so low as to start selling these adoptions? Would UK law even allow it? They are desperate for cash. UK law would not allow it. Our uh, titles, British titles, are very clearly delineated. And I'll tell you, continental titles are also clearly delineated. I know Eddie Anhalt, the he would be the reigning Duke of Anhalt if Anne Holt were still a monarchy, but he is Prince Edward of Anne Holt, and he froths at the mouth at the mention of Frederick Anne Holt. Also, Prince Alexander of Schaumburg Lippe has made an announcement and I am going to read it out because it's very painful for me. This guy has been harvesting our name for his personal gain. Prince Harry cannot stoop lower than appearing with him. I would advise him to stay away from this man. Well, if First of all, the German former princely states, kingdoms, ducal states, grand ducal states, all the former German monarchic states, in 1918, when Germany became a republic, they vested certain rights in the constitutional rights constitutional rights. It's written in the German constitution in the former princely, well, the monarchic states. Let's leave it at that. The head of the family is the person who has the power by law. This is by German law, German Republican law to decree who and who isn't officially a member of his family. This is, 
and also how inheritances go and how the styling of individuals goes. Now, once Germany became a republic in 1918, the titles were shifted over to becoming parts of the surname. But somebody who has, uh, I, I'll, use, I'll use an example, Larry King. Larry King, the name King, doesn't entitle him to be His Majesty King Larry. Where the former royal families are concerned, their, their titles are still used as honorifics and the rules that applied when they were monarchies still apply. And as I said, they have constitutional powers. Eddie Ann Holt never agreed to the adoption of Frederick, whatever his name was, Georges de Beau's ex-husband, now Anhalt. Therefore, he is Mr. Frederick, Prince von Anhalt, in much the same way that Larry King is Mr. Larry King. He's not a prince, he's a mister. The same applies to Mario Max Schoenberg Lippi. When his father and mother got divorced, he was known as, if I remember correctly, Mario Wagner Schoffel. Now, I have spoken to a long-standing friend of his who is who has nothing but good to say about him, incidentally. He says when he was a law student, he was a warm and wonderful host and very generous. He had a fabulous flat in Vienna in an upmarket district, and he was very lavish and very enabling of everybody and very nurturing of everybody and never has, according to him, had a bad word to say about anybody. He says, and this incidentally is somebody who is both British and Austrian, and he said, of course, in Vienna, nobody has a nice word to say about anybody. So a lot of people would say that he was a social clamor who had to be nice to everybody. So he qualifies it by saying that he, his experience of Mario was that he was a very nice to everybody and was certainly very nice to him. And he, as he moved up in the world, he was happy to enable other people to share his good fortune. In, he was, he, let me read out the statement that, because let's take this in stages. The, the, there was a statement issued on the 19th of September 2008, it was a press release, statement by the princely family of Schaumburg Lippe on the wedding of Valdemar Prince of Schaumburg Lippe and Dr. Gertrude Antonia Wagner Schopel. We, the members of the House of Schaumburg Lippe, distance ourselves from the wedding between Valdemar Prince of Schaumburg Lippe and Dr. Gertrude Antonia Wagner Schopel. We will be staying away from the wedding reception on August 20th, 2008. It is important to us 
and presumably it was issued earlier and was then posted on the 19th of September. It is important to us to note that the bride and groom's inappropriate and exaggerated self-portrayal has nothing to do with our manners. We would like to point out that we are neither Dr. Wagner Chopin nor her son, the adopted Mario Max Schoenberg Lippi, will recognize or accept them as members of our family. It is then signed by absolutely every single member of the family, with the exception of Valdemar's daughter, Eleonora. It heads off with Prince Alexander of Schaumburg Lipping and his then wife. It then and and tellingly, Prince Valdemar's elder brother, Prince Wilhelm of Schaumburg Lippe, and his wife, Ilona, who's Princess Wilhelm of Schaumburg Lippe, they also signed it, as well as all the other members of the Schaumburg Lippe family. So, what this announcement means is that in keeping with Alexander Schaumburg Lippe's constitutional rights under the German state law, he has exercised his right and has the backing of all but one member of the family to and maybe even she, and she simply didn't sign the statement, that the marriage is not acknowledged as a dynastic marriage, as a royal marriage. It is a legal marriage in terms, it is a morganatic marriage, but it is not a lawful marriage in dynastic terms. It's only lawful in German state law terms, but not in German constitutional law terms. So right there, he has made it clear that under no circumstances will Gertrude Antonia Schaumburg Lippi be entitled to use the title princess. She can be Mrs. Gertrude Antonia, Princessine zu Schaumburg Lippe, but she cannot be Princess Valdemar Schaumburg Lippe, nor can she be Princess Gertrude Antonia Schaumburg Lippe, and nor can her son be anything but Mr. Mario Schaumburg Lippe. Now, before this, a few years before this, and this is where my friends and I come in with Helga Lee Schaumburg Lippe. Prince Valdemar's cousin, Prince Max of Schaumburg Lippe, was a famous racing driver and he married somebody called Helga Lee Rodeburg and she told me, she told my godson's mother, she told my godson's mother's friend who's, who's, who was, or, or, or let me rephrase that, her god, my godson's mother's friend believed, as did I and as did my godson's mother, that Helga Lee was American, because Helga Lee used to say she was American and that she'd been a beauty queen and this was at a time when beauty queens were desirable socially. Uh, and she married a Prince Max in 1933. She was born in 1911. And 
she was not American, it turns out, when I started to dig into this. She was born Helga Claire Lee Rodeburg in Cologne in 1911. Her father was Dr. Karl Hermann Rodeburg. He was one, he was the CEO of Varta, the battery family, and the senior partner was, if I remember correctly, it was Gunther Quant, who had, whose first, who was married to Magda Goebbels. She, he was her first husband and they divorced. They had a son called Harold, but he had been married before and he had a son called, can't remember, can't remember, sorry. Uh, I think it might have been Herman, <laughs> something like that. And, and, all, and the, at the end of the First World War, Mr. Quant and Dr. Rodeburg bought Varta. Now, Mario Max Schaumburg Lippe is, he's made various statements which are, le which are factually unsound. One of which is on his own website, it says, that he says he's, Helga Lee, you see, adopted him. Helga Lee had leukemia and she also wanted someone to travel with her. And my godson's sister was that bit too young to travel with her. And also, I don't think that parents would have allowed it either. But Mario leapt at the possibility and Helga Lee then adopted him to spite the family. This is my reading of all that I have been told and what I know from before, because Helga Lee used to say how the family didn't like her, they didn't approve of her, they thought she was vulgar and common. She didn't use those words, but that's the message I got. Uh, and that, you know, that she was, but, but she and Max were happily married for a very long time. She was very pretty when she was younger. But I have to tell you, I thought she was a bit of a dragon. Uh, in the early 80s, my godson's parents, my godson's father at the time was the military attaché at the Austrian embassy in London. And his father, the military attaché, was a great friend of Helga Lee. And, and they asked me to take her to Ascot. And she was a real cow, I've got to tell you. She arrived at my flat, which in those days was number 10 West Eaton Place. And I wasn't quite ready. I was doing the picnic all on my own. I had to take everything, cook everything, prepare everything, pack everything, take it down to the car, come back up, blah, 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 blah. It's, I had no help to do it. And she arrived and I must have kept her waiting about 10 or 15 minutes. I said, do, do have a seat, I'm nearly ready. And I'd never met her before. And she started to complain. Oh, it's so rude, you have kept me waiting, da, 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 da. And I said, I'm awfully sorry. Either I have to finish this or nobody's going to be fed. Oh, is he so rude, da, 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 da. I said, well, you know, and I thought, what a cow. And I thought, hmm. But I didn't want to be rude, especially because not only was she much older than me, but she was a friend of friends of mine and they had asked me to take her. So I was, I had to be polite. So I said, well, you know, if you would prefer 
you can always make alternative arrangements. Oh, no, 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 I will wait, she said. And, and she had a definite German accent so I, or, or Austrian accent, so I don't know why they thought she was American. But anyway, she claimed to be American because all the way to Ascot, she was banging on and on about her wonderful American family. And that is why I was named Lee, because I am Helga Lee, because I was, my, my many times grandfather was a Lee, da, 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 da. And then she'd interject, oh, oh no, don't, 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 don't stop, that's all, don't, don't, don't. And she's trying to drive for me. I thought, oh, this woman is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I didn't particularly like her. And then she was also banging on and on, to me, a virtual stranger, about how awfully the family treated her and, uh, the, and the, I am her message. I don't remember her exact words, but her message was, and I am as good as them. I have leave this, that Mayflower, da 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 da, in my background, and and I thought, <laughs> I thought she's missing something here. What they don't like about her is her vulgarity <laughs> and her chippiness and her. I mean, she, I didn't like her at all, i got to tell you. And funnily enough, the, to cut a long story short, she then decided in the early uh, 200s, the 2000s, whatever, 20-something, noughties, I think they call it. She then decided that and and she needed a traveling companion and his mother was perfectly happy for him to leave his law studies and travel with Helga Lee and to be able to pass her money on to him she adopted him, and I know that the Schaumburg Lippe family was furious because Pfaffstadt Castle, Schloss Pfaffstadt, which is in in Austria near Salzburg, uh, which my friends used to go to, incidentally, but evidently the aristocracy. In, and the royal circles in who were not very close friends of hers, they wouldn't go. <laughs> They'd boycott it. And she had, she had a, uh, she, even though the castle had come from uh, Prince Albert and his wife Elsa, who was a Duchess of Württemberg. Queen Mary's ancestors, incidentally, were Württembergs. Uh, she left it to Mario. She also left her apartment in Monaco to Mario, very nicely located apartment. And I was speaking to a friend of her of hers whose mother was a great friend of hers and and my reading of the situation is that Helga Lee decided to become American to get away from the fact that her father Dr. Roderburg was and was in trade and was one of was the CEO and one of the owners of Varta, which is one of the largest battery companies on earth and even in those days was. But of course, in the 1930s, trade was, you know, the aristocracy and royalty didn't want to be tainted with trade, unless, of course, it was like you were a descendant of Marshall Field or Mark Cross, in which case it was okay. <laughs> and, 
and I think, and, and I'm told that the Schaumburg Lippis were furious that she was not returning Fafstadt to the Schaumburg Lippi family, considering it was a Schaumburg Lippi uh, Schloss or uh, castle, that she, but she did it, I'm sure, to be spiteful. Uh, and she was going to show them because as far as she was concerned, um, she wasn't exactly morganatic, but she was not embraced by them. And I know of other cases where, for instance, Dion de Pugy was a famous courtesan at the turn of the last century. And she became Princess Gika, and she was completely embraced by the family, notwithstanding her very dodgy past because of her attitude, her demeanor, her conduct. And in my opinion, Helga Lee created problems for herself and I can well see her deciding, right, this is great. He's positive, he's, or oh, he's a, a life enhancer and he's not aristocratic or royal. <laughs> two fingers to the lot of them, and she went and did it. Well, the fact that she adopted him meant that by law, he could inherit the property that she had inherited from Prince Max, but also her own personal wealth. Because Dr. Roderburg was a very, rich man, not as rich as the Quants, because the Quants also owned BMW. But you know, to be even a minor partner in one of the biggest battery companies on earth means you've got money. And also, Helga Lee inherited from her father Villa Rodeburg, which is in the Grunewald district of Berlin, which was always in West Berlin, not East Berlin, just as how the Schaumburg Lippe uh, castle, I suppose it's 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 a castle which is, uh, I think it's Bukeburg, is in West Germany, fortunately for them, and it's a magnificent castle. So Helga Lee and the Schoenberg Lippis were doing pretty well even when Germany was divided between East and West. Yes, Varta lost all of its East German side, but they still had the West German side. And she inherited, as I said, the Villa Rodeburg, which is now the showroom for Meissen, the famous China company. So, I should just say briefly, Magda Quant, during, before the war, she married Josef Goebbels. And they had six children. And we all know how that ended. And since this is YouTube, I am not going to say any more. That, but they, it was a terribly tragic end for her six children with Josef Goebbels. So that's the dirt in quotes on 
Mario Max von Schaum, Zu, sorry, Zu Schaumberg Lippi. He is Mr. Mario. He's not Prince Mario. He is not a highness. He's po posted about HRH Prince Harry. Well, Harry is technically an HRH, but not allowed to use it. So right there, Mario was falling foul of the late Queen's ruling. And I'm sure Harry loved all of that because after all, you know, certain birds love to have their feathers stroked. Audrey Naylor says, Prince Harry and Meghan sent goodwill messages. It says 54 minutes ago, but it was in the Sun newspaper this morning. The palace wouldn't tell the Sun newspaper he contacted the king. So who did? Audrey Naylor. Two guesses. Meghan and or Harry. Who do you think it is? I know who I think it is. But I have to say, my understanding is that no good wishes are going to be going amiss but nor are any good wishes going to be absolving anybody of any guilt let's put it that way angela whitehouse says what makes me a bit cross is the press parked outside the hospital like a flock of hungry vultures the little Wales children should be able to visit their mummy in peace i'm sorry angela whitehouse i don't agree at all the press have a valid function in this country and in any free society and paparazzi also have a valid function as long as they're not abusing you and violating your rights, they have a right to earn a living. If you are a public figure and you are in public and they are going to earn a valid living photographing you, that is absolutely acceptable, in my opinion, in a, in a democratic society. I see no reason why the press and their photographers shouldn't be camped outside of the hospital it shows a genuine interest in the royal family and in Catherine's welfare. I don't believe in ever laughing a gift horse in the mouth. I think it is really important spiritually to know what your blessings are and count them. Sorry. And... Are the paparazzi and the press hungry vultures? Well, they'd be a heck of a lot hungrier if they didn't work for a living. And also, I'm very much in favour of people who work for a living rather than scrounge off the state. So for all those reasons, I am in favour of the press and paparazzi. Yeah, if they are violating one's rights that's another matter if they are hounding and harassing you that's another matter but if they are fulfilling their valid function i think we should actually be grateful that we live in a society where they can function and that their existence helps us to remain a free society ronnie says i do wonder if the press camped outside the hospital are sending a message to the overseas couple that this story of the princess of wales is bigger than any pap walk in a parking lot Meghan markle would kill for this kind of press attention and now her child is unwell they don't say which one perhaps they haven't made up their minds which one is ill well these things take time to figure out especially when that 
there's a certain mean and nasty person who actually gave the game away and said, gratis friends of mine who knew what was going on behind the scenes. So I have to thank them again because but for them getting in touch with me, I would never have known about Megan's supposed plans to reenact Saturday Night Live at the White House with John Travolta. Ah. Mm. And yes, you can imagine, Megan's trying to figure out, obvious, I bet, Oh, now, what can I do to get that level of attention? And I think somebody ought to tell her, you'll never get it. You'll never get it because you're not Catherine. Catherine is getting it because she deserves it. She's getting her just desserts and you're getting yours too. And we're going to end with Riley Perkins, who says, why is no one paying attention to Sarah Duchess of York's new cancer diagnosis? Well, I'm sorry, I think I, it's in all the papers. It's been covered. And more than that, I don't think is necessary. Uh, and, you know, I'm very sorry to hear because melanoma is a very serious thing at the best of times. And uh, I wish her well. I mean, she's been very nice to me in the past, and I've been very nice to her. And I really do wish her well. She's basically a nice person. Uh, not perfect, maybe even less perfect than many of us, but very kind-hearted. And that, I think makes an awful lot acceptable, which is why the late Queen always relished Sarah. And the news has been reported. I don't see what more could be done. And on that note, I'd say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please keep the questions and comments coming in. So I will know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless and goodbye. And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and Godspeed.